Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about the F3F tool. The F3F tool is a piece of software that is made for training purposes on F3B and F3F tasks, which is a contest class in RC glider flying. If you are interested, stay tuned. So first of all, some information about the tool, so what it can do and what it cannot, cannot do. Um, it's working with a GPS sensor. So I use the GPS Logger 3 from SM Modellbau, but uh, other GPS sensors should work as well. The other thing you need is a jetty transmitter. The program will only run on jetty transmitters, apart from a plane that is capable of flying F3F or F3B. Uh, that is all you need. So, to show you what you need, we will start with the setup of the GPS sensor. The best thing is to put it into the nose of the glider, because the nose is usually made out of glass or Kevlar, so uh, the carbon fiber of the fuse and also of the wings uh, will not shield the GPS signal from the satellites. The, um, the GPS logger always needs a certain amount of satellites, otherwise it won't work properly. Hi guys, I was just editing the video and it came to my mind that I didn't even talk about Frank. Frank is the guy who made this uh, tool available for us for free. And he did put a lot of energy and time into it. So I have to say a big thank you to you, Frank. And uh, yeah, leave a comment to also thank Frank for his work and uh, enjoy the rest of the video. The next thing we need to do is install the software on your jetty transmitter. And I will show you how to do that now. So if you want to install the software, you have to go to the download page on GitHub. I put the link in the, in the video description and uh, download the file that says F3F tool version 1.4.zip. Um, you download that file and after you downloaded it, you can open the file menu and you will find uh, one uh, file that says f3f underscore uh, 14.lc and one folder that contains some additional data. But uh, we don't have to know what this does exactly, we just have to put it into the right um, folder on our transmitter, which I will show you now. If it's the first time you are connecting your transmitter to your computer, it could be that you have, do not have the most recent software on your transmitter. If you want to install the most recent software on your transmitter, you just have to connect the USB cable um, with your computer and the other side with your transmitter. So if you do so and switch on the transmitter then, it asks you to use the USB connection and you say yes. So after you did this and wait for some seconds uh, and the Jetty Studio is active, you will get a prompt if you want to uh, upgrade your transmitter or if you want to make a backup or something. And uh, yeah, I will show you how to do it. My transmitter is on the newest version, but I, it should be possible for you to see it in any way. So you go to uh, upgrade. And as you can see, my transmitter is on the version 5.07 and this is the most recent one. If you are using a DC16 or DS16 transmitter from the first generation, it is possible to um, select different types of software. You need to select the one that says Lua on the software package. Otherwise, you will not be able to use the F3F tool as shown in this video. So if you have to, you can now do the update uh, procedure. The software is pretty um, easy to use and will show you the, the steps of upgrading your transmitter. If you are done with the software update procedure and have restarted your transmitter and maybe reconnected it to the computer, you can now open the transmitter um, in the same way you would use a USB drive or an SD card or something similar. And now we see that there are some different folders on the um, 
internal memory of the transmitter and we have to find the folder that says apps. In this folder you will probably find some uh, apps that have been pre-installed with the Lua um, software and uh, here is the point where you have to put the F3F tool folder and also the file that you have downloaded from the internet. So copy them and put them into the folder. I will not do that because I, have, I already have them installed and there may be some information um, in that in these folders that I have uh, because of the setup I have done. Um, so yeah, just do it as I told you and uh, then it should work. So if you have installed the software as I have shown you in this video, you should now be able to configure the F3F tool on your transmitter. To do so, we go to the menu, go to applications, then down to user applications, hit the plus button, and then select F3F underscore 14. And now it is added to the to our user applications. In case you're wondering, these are just uh, two other Lua apps I am using when flying my gliders. Uh, one is a pre-flight check and the other is the RX monitor which shows the uh, battery level in percentage. As you can see it's uh, around 78% at, the, at this time. Um, maybe not that precise but yeah, another topic. If you are interested in this uh, or how I use this, uh, please leave a comment. So we have now added the F3F tool to our apps and it is possible to access it via the applications menu. Scroll down to F3F tool configuration and this is how it looks if you open it for the first time. You can now um, select your multi-switch which is the most important switch for using the software. I am using uh, this momentary switch on the far left on my, my transmitter. It's spring-loaded, so it uh, always goes back to the neutral position. Um, this is, in my opinion, the ideal, ideal solution um, to use the software. Another possibility is to use the trim switches um, for activating the software, but uh, I will show you that later. So I will assign my multi-switch like this. Now comes the center adjust. Uh, I will talk about that um, trim switch setup later as I told you. But uh, I will now use my uh, rudder trim for the center adjust control. I do this by selecting digital trim. Trim 3. As you can see it shows the values when I push it and it's assigned now. So what the center adjust control does, if the course is set up, you can uh, in, by, uh, in, by increments of one meter move the center position of your course. But uh, I will tell you about this course setup thing later. Uh, I will leave the values for the uh, distance F3B and distance uh, F3F as shown here because it's uh, just as in the regulations. Now we have to select the latitude, the longitude and the speed. So here we have to select the telemetry values that are provided by our uh, telemetry sensor, in my case the GPS level 3. For this your model has to be switched on. Mine is lying in the garden. So, at first we need to select the latitude, then the longitude, and finally the speed. If you have a sensor, a GPS sensor or something, that's also uh, providing the airspeed, you have to pay attention. You need to select the GPS speed. So, and now we are already done with the setup of the configuration. The next step is the course setup. 
we uh, have to do the course setup every time we go out flying, especially if we are changing our um, flying field or something. And uh, it works as follows. You select this, again you have to go to the menu, applications and scroll down on, uh, until you get to course setup. So now you are here. So the next step is to do the course setup. We do this by going to the menu and uh, selecting F3, F2 course setup. Because I have been using the software before, here is the value of the slope I have been flying last time, but uh, never mind. So if you want to set up the course and you are at the flying field, you have to switch on your glider and uh, take it in your hand and move to the center position for flying. So the pilot position on your F3, F course. Then you hit the start button and it locks the center of the course. Then you go to the left for maybe 50 meters or something along the edge of the slope. And you have to take your glider with you, obviously. And then you hit the left button and then you go right back to the right side of the pilot position and hit the right button. And if that's done, you, can, you have set up the uh, course for the F3F flying. If you want on the other hand side fly F3B, it's working a bit different. You can switch the mode by going by pushing this button and going to the F3B course setup. If you want to set up the course, you go to the A line, looking right through your visor um, into the course. Then you hit the start button. Now you have to move parallel to the course. So you move in the direction of the B base, but not along the A base, but into the, uh, the direction of the B base as possible, as perpendicular as possible. That's not always easy, but maybe you need a helper for that, um, or just get some bearing point in the, in the far out or something. So same game here as in F3F, you stand at the start point, hit the start button, Take your glider with you to the bearing point. Um, yeah, it's the the the, far, the further you go out, the more precise it gets. So um, yeah, maybe go for 50 meters or something. Then hit the bear button, and you are ready to go. To get some more information out of the software, it is possible to uh, put a telemetry. Uh, to put the software window onto your display. To do so, you go to Timers Sensors, go to Display to Telemetry. As you can see here, I have some screen set up, but you can just select uh, one that is free, hit the plus button, go to Lua, and use the F3F version 1.4, which gives you a window. Um, on your telemetry display. Um, just for info, I have some other values on my um, display as well in this on this screen, but they are not really needed for using the F3F tool. But it's uh, sometimes good to know how many satellites you your GPS sensor has, or if there is any issue with the signals. <coughs> so this is the view of the F3F tool. As you can see, I'm uh, far away from the starting point as I am not at the flying field at the moment. But uh, this is the screen basically. Um, you can see um, some uh, live demo in the video I have put in the video description. So uh, yeah, you can see it live there. When using the multi-switch for uh, using the software, the, there are a few function on the functions on this button. So if you just hit it once, it will, it will launch the task. In the F3F case, it will now start a countdown because you have 30 seconds before you have to go into the course. So you should um, hit the button when you start your glider for uh, good training conditions. Nine, 
zero course. Yeah, of course, now it's not working, but uh, this is usually how it works. Uh, so this is how you start the task with in just a little push of the button. If you hit it twice, a base left. you can change the direction of the base. If you push it for a longer time, center adjusted. you adjust the center of your course. Maybe your GPS sensor is drifting or something, um, so you can uh, land your model and get back to the pilot position and hit this button for a, long, for a few seconds until it resets the center position of the course. So these are the three functions. If you are flying F3B, I will just switch the mode quickly. So we are now in the F3B mode. Um, there are a bit different functions. If you push the button once, you start the task. So, for example, I can start the speed task now. Launch and there's a countdown of 60 seconds. That is because after you release the glider from the tow hook, um, you have 60 seconds to get into the speed course. So now it's time to go into the course and uh, as, as soon as you go over the A base, the, um, the program will start to uh, count the legs and also give you signals when it's time to turn. I will abort this by switching the buttons for two times. That gets me into the distance mode. The distance mode is a bit different in F3B because you have um, usually four minutes of time for the uh, distance flying and uh, so there's no countdown or something. In this uh, mode you can just easily start the task by hitting the button once. Launch. It will now wait for you to launch and get into the course. And then it will count the legs for actually forever because uh, there's no limit or something. And here's the same function. If you push the button for a long time, it recenters your position. But always keep in mind it's the position of the glider, not your own position. So you have to land, put your, put, uh, take your glider to the A base, hit this button for a long time, center and the center is adjusted. And it also prompts this by a little uh, speak output. So if you want to use the uh, adjustment of the center with the trim buttons. It's also possible just hit it once for one meter to the left and once for one meter to the right. As I already told you, you need to do some setup and I will show you how to do it now. So you get to the fine tuning, digital trim, and now you have to change the function of your trim to three position switch. Um, if you did not change anything on this before, uh, it will probably say rudder for your rudder uh, stick and you can use this drop down menu and go to the bottom of it and select the three position switch. I did the same thing for my elevator because I use this, these buttons for getting the telemetry values, for example, for my height or my speed or something. Um, this only works because I have put my elevator trim on another switch on this side here. You can see it here, how it is set up. But I have done another video on how to set up uh, an external switch for trimming your elevator, for example. I will put a, a link in the description to that video too. So now you should be good to go. So have fun. If you learned something today, subscribe to my channel and uh, yeah, spread the word.